Hello everyone and welcome to Detroit. Today is the Lions 90th anniversary in the great city of Detroit. Today we are playing against the Vikings and we're going to, for the pregame show we're going to be learning about the history of the team. For the halftime show we're going to be learning about the notable players. And for the end we're going to be learning about the current status of the team and the outlook for the future. For the history, the Lions actually started in 1920 and the city of Portsmouth uh, owned them and they were named the Spartans. They were only there for four years, though, before they turned into the Detroit Lions, and they were bought by radio executive and host George Richards. Richards wanted to bring a team to Detroit because he was very intrigued by the NFL and its expanding market, but he only owned the team for seven years before he sold it to Fred Mandel. Fred Mandel was a very unsuccessful owner of the Lions, and they barely ever won anything, so he was actually pressured into selling the team to Lyle Fife Edwin Anderson. He was actually one of the most successful owners in Lions history, and he won four championships as an owner. He won one in 1935, very early on in his ownership. Then he won back-to-back -back championships in 1952 and 1953. He also won one in 1957 before he sold the team to the Ford family, who's owned it ever since. The Ford family bought the team in 1965, which was five years before the NFL merger happened with the AFL. The Lion, or when the NFL merger happened, the Ford family wanted to have a new stadium because the Lions were actually sharing the stadium with the Detroit baseball team, the Detroit Lions, and it's called the Briggs Stadium. But they decided to pay for a new stadium called the Pontiac Superdome. And shortly after, or they played in that until 1999, so 24 years, and then the Ford family won become one of the like best owners in the NFL. So they ended up spending 500 million dollars on a new stadium named after their family, the called the Ford Field. It was one of the first indoor stadiums, and it was uh, revolutionary because one of the first domes as well. So the elements wouldn't affect the game, and it was just all based on like the skills of the players. Now. It is halftime, and for the halftime show, we have brought some of the best players in franchise history back. We have brought one of the best quarterbacks in franchise history, Bobby Lane. Bobby Lane signed with the Lions after his former team actually disbanded, and he went from the AFL, which is the American Football League, to the NFL, which is the National Football League. He was the quarterback for the three Lions championships in the 50s, the 1952, 1953, 1957. He also uh, become, became a Hall of Fame quarterback later in his career with the Steelers and ended up becoming a coach later on in his career. Next, we have Barry Sanders, who was the second overall pick in 1999 out of the University of Oklahoma. He was one of the few running backs ever to rush for 2,000 yards, and he also is one of the few running backs to ever win an MVP. He was... Uh, a nine-time Pro Bowler, which was every year of his career, and he was also a six-time All-Pro running back. Our next player that we have with us today is Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson was taken second overall in the 2007 draft out of Georgia Tech. He was famously picked over, or er, right after Jamarcus Russell, who is known as being one of the biggest NFL draft busts. So it's safe to say the Lions had a good pick here. He was nicknamed Megatron because of his freakish athletic build, being 6'7 and running a 4'3 40 and having a 40 inch vertical. He was also a multiple time All Pro and Pro Bowl receiver. He also owns the NFL single season receiving record of 1,964 receiving yards in one game. He did it in the 2012 season with the Lions. The final player that we have is quarterback Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford was taken first overall in the 2009 draft out of Georgia. He was he is known as maybe the best quarterback in Lions history because he has all of the passing yards and touchdown and completion records for the franchise. He played for the Lions for many years before he was traded to the Los Angeles Rams and he actually eventually went on to win a Super Bowl with them. Now for our post-game show, we have the current status of the Lions. The Lions actually 
just won their first playoff game since the 1992 season and finished the season 14-6. and six. This is attributed to the head coach, Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell is known as one of the most fiery coaches and inspires his players more than anyone else. In fact, he is one of only three NFL coaches to be given an A-plus grade by their players. The next person that has helped the success of the Lions is offense coordinator Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson has been offered multiple head coaching jobs that he's actually turned down to stay in Detroit because he wants to help bring success and build a culture. He has completely renovated the offensive scheme of the Lions after he was hired when the Lions fired former offense coordinator Anthony Lynn. Since he has been the offense coordinator, the offense has been top five in scoring every season. And finally, we have Brad Holmes. Brad Holmes is the general manager for the Lions and is known as a draft genius. He took Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round of the 2020 draft, and he ended up being an all-pro, so it was one of the better draft steals of that year. Also, the Lions have improved their record every year under him, starting 1-15 in in his first year, and then they went 9-8, and eight, and then this year they went 14-6. and six. So they've improved their record every year he has been the general manager. Thank you all for coming to the 90th anniversary of the Detroit Lions, and we just hope you come back again. Today we looked at the history of the team, some notable players, and the current status of the team. Thank you.